I can guarantee if you didn't watch hundreds of F124 tutorials on YouTube, you wouldn't know about this. This setting is used by league racers and, well, they can't be wrong, can they? It's simple. Open your settings, go to graphics settings, then video mode. Here you can see an option called frame rate limit. By default, it is turned off, but you have to turn this on. This might seem counterintuitive initially because you are limiting yourself to a maximum frame rate, but trust me, this helps you achieve a faster lap time. Just below, there is another option called maximum FPS. Set this to 60 or 65. What these settings do is it limits the maximum FPS to 60. You could save up to two to three tenths just by turning this setting on. Sure, you would lose the frame rate, but you will gain a lot of performance. This is the meta. You are faster around a lap with FPS limited to 60 than with FPS reaching 150 or 200. It's one of those settings through which you could easily gain time on your opponents just by clicking a button. If you are someone new to the game or is having troubles adjusting to the new handling model in an F1 car, then the ideal solution is to start practicing with F2 cars. If you also wish to experience the career mode to its fullest, you have to start the career mode as an F2 driver. So in such scenarios, understanding how an F2 car works and how is it different from an F1 car is important. These F2 cars have lesser downforce than an F1 car which makes it ideal to practice the game with. This is in line with real Formula One drivers, where they climb up the ladder from F2 to F1. Because these are two different categories, you will easily find that the F1 car setups that you have been using won't work on an F2 car. This is because, as I said, F2 cars in general have less downforce, which means less grip you will find yourself losing the rear end of the car easily or locking up the tyre. It's important to set up the F2 separately rather than using F1 car setup. What you have to do is use the F1 car setup as a baseline and adjust the settings to generate high downforce and high rear grip. To easily understand, here is a video from Sim Racing Setups explaining how to set up an F2 car. Use this as a guide to optimize your F2 car. This should help you understand the new handling model better and also lets you experience the game to its fullest. Different ERS modes determine how you deploy energy during a race. Codemasters has updated the ERS model for this year's game, which means now you can toggle around different ERS mode during a race just like in a real F1 car. There are four modes to be precise, none, medium, hot lap and overtake mode. It's important to understand when to use these modes during a race, because if you don't, you will lose big time. I won't go into detail explaining how to use these because there are already many videos on YouTube. You can watch Jano Opmir's video on how to maximize your ERS performance. It's a detailed video on how to use ERS during both qualifying and race. So check it out. There may arise a situation during a race where you have to change the brake balance of the car or use the DRS or overtake button. It's important to configure these settings to a specific button on your steering wheel, just like a real F1 driver. You could always run with the default setup, but it's not convenient. There are three settings you should configure to a specific button on your steering wheel for better racecraft. These are brake balance, differential and all-important ERS. In my G29, I have configured the ERS button to this left and right button to easily change the ERS mode. This will be the most used of the three, so make sure to place it in a convenient location. The second is the brake balance. The G29 has these plus and minus buttons and I have set the brake balance to these buttons. Plus to increase the brake balance, and minus to decrease the brake balance. The third is the differential. 
You normally use this the least of these three, but you might need it with changing grip conditions. The G29 comes with a rotary knob, and this works perfectly for adjusting differential. Some other important button includes your overtake button, pit limiter, and the DRS button. Configure these to different buttons on your steering wheel for improved racecraft. Another important adjustment to make to your car is to set it up according to the particular track you are racing in. Each track has a different race and qualifying setup, including different brake balances, tyre pressures, suspension configurations, etc. The engine braking option I was talking about earlier also lies in the car setup menu. Just by setting up the car with a proper setup, you could improve your lap time by a second. You might already know about this. But you might be wondering how to set up your car for so many different tracks. After all, there are 24 different tracks in the game. I know it's really difficult to find different setups for different tracks, but I have a solution. Go to the Sim Racing Setups website on Google and copy their setups. You can find dedicated setups for a particular track on their website as well as on their YouTube page. Use these setups as a baseline and adjust them according to your needs. Just letting you know, I am not promoting them. They did not pay me anything to talk about them. I use their setup personally and I feel they deliver high quality setups. Now, to make your life a bit easier, there is also a shortcut. You can go to the leaderboard in Time Trail and copy the setup of any top players. It's way easier than configuring all the setup options manually. But remember, this setup from the leaderboard works only for Time Trail and not for race. Let's talk about race starts. How do you get the best launch off the racing line? It's easy with traction control turned on, but with traction control off, it is really difficult to get off the racing line without optimizing revs and managing wheel spin. You can't floor the throttle and get off the racing line with traction control turned off. You might notice there might be a loss of rear grip and a lot of wheel spin, and you will just hit the wall when the lights turn green. So how to optimize the race start? To get a good launch off the racing line, hold the throttle at around 11,500 RPM and as soon as the light turns green, lift the throttle a bit and reach around 8,000 to 9,000 RPM to manage wheel spin, upshift to third gear and then hit the overtake button for some extra boost. The key here is to manage the wheel spin you get without traction control by lifting off the throttle as the lights turn green. This allows the engine to send a good amount of power to the rear wheels without overpowering it, which manages the wheel spin, which means you won't crash and burn at the very start. Another important trick is to use short shifting. Don't let the engine reach maximum RPM, which means don't let the engine reach maximum power, especially in lower gears. This will limit the power to the rear wheels, which will reduce the wheel spin. With this, you will get the best race start, but feel free to optimize it to your liking. Trail braking in an F1 car is an advanced technique where you apply the brakes not just before entering a corner, but continue to apply light braking pressure even as you start to turn the wheel. Trail braking is the fastest way around a corner, and doing so will drastically improve your lap time. Two things to keep in mind. One, weight transfer. Braking hard initially transfers weight to the front of the car, pushing the tires into the ground and maximizing grip for slowing down. Two, maintaining grip. By gradually easing off the brakes as they turn, you can keep some weight on the front tires allowing you to maintain a good grip for steering through the corner. Three, combating understeer. This smooth transition prevents the car from understeering, which means it wants to go straighter than the intended turn. Trail braking helps prevents understeer, which means you could take your racing line with lots of confidence. Trail braking is just faster. Trail braking is the best and most effective technique to go around a corner and maintain a higher cornering speed. So, to maximize your lap time, start trail braking. 
But remember, corners that require a greater change in direction are the ones where you should trail break more, and corners that don't require much change in direction reward less trail breaking. There are many YouTube videos explaining how to trail break. Here is a video from Brendan Lee that goes into detail explaining how to trail break. Make sure to watch it. With the overhaul to this year's game, the developers have pushed the game into being a bit more realistic. And that means changes to how the tyre performs with changing inputs. The tyre wear has drastically changed this year, so it's extremely important to manage your tyres during a race. With that said, here are two tips on how to improve tyre wear during a race. 1. Increase your tyre pressure. Experiment with slightly higher tyre pressures to reduce tyre flex and wear. This is because higher pressure makes the tyre carcass stiffer, reducing the amount it deflects under load. However, there's a trade-off. A tyre with too much pressure will have a smaller contact patch with the track, reducing grip. So make sure to set the tyre pressure according to the track. 2. Reduce slip angles. This refers to the angle between the direction the tyre is pointing and the direction it's actually travelling. A smaller slip angle means less scrubbing and wear. Take smooth lines through corners and avoid excessive steering angles. Minimise lockups. Smoothness is key. Avoid harsh braking, acceleration and steering inputs. Aim for smooth, controlled movements to minimise tyre wear. With this, you should see a huge improvement in your tyre wear during a Grand Prix. Now, coming to the final, and the most important insight about the game is to use telemetry. Telemetry data can tell you a lot about your racecraft. It can help you identify your weaknesses and lets you compare your racecraft with your rivals. Any motorsports rely on telemetry data to understand more about how they brake, what's their cornering speed, etc, etc. It also plays an important role in sim racing. This is especially useful if you are trying to learn sim racing on your own, without any coach or guide. This is where EA RaceNet comes into play. Disclaimer, I use RaceNet personally, and EA is not sponsoring this video. RaceNet is one of the many telemetries used for F124 that helps players improve their racing experience. RaceNet comes officially from EA, so you have to log into their website or download their app through Play Store or App Store and log in with the same account as your F124 game. Once you log in, this is how it looks. The best feature about this is it allows you to compare yourself with other players and lets you analyse what you are doing wrong. RaceNet is an easy way to understand your racecraft, even though it doesn't provide you with all the details. Here is a video from the Sim Racing Setups YouTube channel that goes into details on how to use RaceNet. Give it a try and let me know in the comments if you need a detailed guide on how to use RaceNet.